Hello! Today's stories come from r slash I don't work here, lady. We've got four stories today from the subreddit blending Karens across America and the world with your local store chains. Our first story is, I got fired from a farm store that I shop at. Edit. Wow, the Reddit mobile app really butchered my post, so I cleaned it up so it's easier to read. I still have no idea why autocorrect insists that humiliated is not a valid word. I used to work at a West Coast division store of Kroger. My family has several pets and farm animals. So I routinely shop a local farm store. Most of the time, I did this after my shift ended, which means I am in my work uniform, black slacks, either a dark red polo shirt or a button-up gray shirt that has the store logos embroidered on them. The farm store personnel wear jeans, t-shirts, and gold-colored vests with the farm store logo. I was in the farm store looking at some electric fence supplies. This woman kept pestering me and asking questions about some jeans she wanted to try on from the other side of the store. I politely pointed in the general direction of the clothing section. She stomped off. A couple minutes later, same woman is demanding I unlock the changing room for her. I'm rather irritated with her over-aggressive Karen attitude and snapped, No, now go away and leave me alone. Again, she stomps off. I picked up a few items and started towards the checkout when I get ambushed by this same woman who now has the store manager in tow. She is demanding I apologize to her. The manager just shakes his head then asks, Would you like to apologize to this customer? What for? She's rude, obnoxious, and irritating as heck. No, I don't want to apologize. She screams, I've never been so hamulated in all my life. You need to fire him now. The manager is still shaking his head in disbelief when he says, Well, ma'am, I am not able to do that. And just why the Hades not? She demanded. The store manager is just standing there staring at her. I reply, Obviously, she isn't smart enough to figure out I don't work here. So save us both some time and fire me. Then maybe she will shut up and go away. You're fired. The manager barked, drawing even more attention from other customers in the store. I lean in closer to the woman and say, Are you happy now, ma'am? That's the third time he's fired me this week. Have a nice day. Thanks for shopping Smith's Food and Drug. And I walked away as everyone listening starts laughing. The manager hollers at me as I'm walking towards the registers. See you tomorrow? Yeah, I have to get hay and alfalfa. The woman threw down the jeans she was holding and ran out the doors. Why do Karens make it their lifelong goal to get people fired? It's so ridiculous. This woman deserved to be humiliated. Speaking of, let's check out the comments where OP's autocorrect took center stage. She who loves to draw said, The fact that she kept singling you out every time she wanted something rather than ask another employee is mind-boggling. Some people are denser than a black hole, I swear. Someone else added, Probably in her mind, they were the only one in uniform, since the store's actual uniform was so different. My Love Kills said, I've never been hamulated before either. Is it a sex thing? My husband is very vanilla. Someone else said, Is that some kind of deli meat-based kink? Where do I sign up? Fishhead added, You don't sign up, you silly goose. It's a deli. You take a number. <laughs> Our second story is one of my favorite I don't work here lady scenarios. Our story is pulled out an Uno reverse card. This happened earlier this week. Told the story to some friends at a bonfire last night and they all agreed I should share it here. Obligatory, sorry on mobile bit. I'll try to keep formatting errors and typos to a minimum. Quick background info. I work at a company that installs custom closets. Our uniform includes a blue button-up Carhartt shirt with the company logo on it. I think some of you may already be picking up on where this is going. So I'm driving home from work after a very long and tedious day, completely covered in sawdust when I get a call from my lovely wife. She had put in a pickup order at the local Walmart, but they had failed to give her our almond milk. She asks if I'd be willing to stop and let them know they shorted us and grab it. While I'm not particularly enthusiastic to add a stop on my way home, I tell her, okay. I get there and head on over to the customer service desk and explain the situation. The lady working there is very sweet and says she'll have somebody from the pickup department swing over and take care of me. She gestures towards a nearby bench and informs me I can have a seat while I wait. 
I gladly did so and promptly pulled out my phone and attempt to disassociate for a few minutes. A few minutes, maybe five at most, go by, and a line forms up. I guess the lady at the desk stepped away for a moment. I start to hear grumbling about lazy employees and how nobody has any work ethic anymore. Wish I could be more specific on their exact phrasing, but I was trying very hard not to pay attention to anything going on around me at this point. After a few more moments, I hear a very aggressive clearing of a throat, followed by a very annoyed sounding, Excuse me, sir. I've been waiting for help for over 10 minutes. I look up to see a woman holding an armful of clothes glaring at me. She will henceforth be referred to as Glaring Woman, or GW for short. So I respond, Well, I find that unlikely, as I haven't even been here for 10 minutes, and I got here before you. Well, maybe this would go faster if you weren't messing around on your phone. At this point, I've now connected the dots and realized that she thinks I work here. I'm about to utter the words, classic, I don't work here line, when an idea hits me. You're right, sorry for holding you up. I pull up the Walmart app on my phone and show her the almond milk. My wife and I didn't get the almond milk we ordered. We were supposed to get two cartons. Why are you showing me your phone? So you can grab me my almond milk. Is that not why you're here? Ew, no, I don't work here. Cue malicious grin. Well, neither do I. How about we stop bothering each other now? She looked me up and down, and I could see realization dawn on her face. She quietly walked back to the line, and I sat back down on my bench. Eventually, the desk lady came back and got the line moving, and an employee from pickup came and got me my almond milk. And that's the story. At least she didn't try to get me fired. (laughs) The best. As they say, fight fire with fire. I love that OP was so on the ball, even though he'd had such a long day. And what a gem for stopping to pick up a second carton of almond milk, even though he was exhausted. Let's check out some equally funny anecdotes in the comments. Someone said, haha, so perfect. But honestly, how often does it really happen that an employee is sitting around just hanging out on their phone while lines form? I've never ever seen that. OP replied, Honestly, I've never seen that either. People get the oddest notions in their heads. Starkiller added, I've unfortunately seen that, and it almost ended up in me running out of gas on the way to the next gas station. Context. I stopped off for gas a few years back, but all the gas pumps had cones in front of it. I saw a teen boy in a yellow vest sitting in a chair next to the pumps on his phone. I asked him what's up with the cones, and he said, All out of gas. Well, A couple hours later, after barely making it to the next gas station a few miles away, I heard on the radio that the gas station had a lot of complaints, and turns out they weren't out of gas. Kid was just lazy. I'd bet my life he got fired. Edit. Forgot to add that there was a line of cars, and the kid didn't say crap until I called out to him. Just Drowsen shared. Sounds like the time I was in a sketchy part of town waiting for my Uber. My Uber was running really, really late, and I'm impatiently scanning for it around the parking lot outside a CVS. Skinny tweaker in a beat-up Civic with a crappy exhaust parks and stares at me. I scan. He glares at me. I ignore him and scan for my Uber. Tweaker says, are you staring at me? I reply, are you my Uber driver? Kind of taken aback to the question, the tweaker says, no. So then I say, then I'm not staring at you. He huffed and sped off. Bibliophilum replied, excellent, but a missed opportunity. Glaring woman could have been glaring. Our third story had a surprising fact in the comments that I couldn't pass up and includes a reference to one of my favorite live shows. The story's called Starts Wholesome, Gets Dicey, Ends Wholesome. Just stumbled upon this sub and saw some similar stories, so I figured I'd share this little gem from my college days. My bus was delayed by five hours at a long-distance terminal in beautiful, nowhere, rural Florida. I, short, husky, white teenager, was dressed in a black button-up, red tie, and black pants with my eyeliner and mascara from the Rocky Horror Picture Show I had attended before traveling, probably looking a bit worse for wear. I was sitting for a decent while when I noticed that an older, probably late 60s or early 70s lady, was trying to do something on a self-service kiosk and muttering to herself in Spanish. She seemed to be getting frustrated and was darting her eyes around for employees, but the place was packed with people due to the delays at around 3 a.m., so not many were around. Someone eventually did stop to try to help her when I heard, no hablo inglés. 
causing the person to just look kind of puzzled and walk off. I was in my third semester of Spanish at the time, so I slowly walked over and said, Excuse me, do you need some help? She asked if I spoke Spanish, to which I replied that I was still learning but would do my best. She clapped her chest with a literal, Dios mío, and we pleasantly worked through what she needed done and went our separate ways. Someone had taken my seat, so I was just standing around for a minute or two when I get the tap on my shoulder. I turned around to see a large white woman with an inordinate amount of luggage and a child in tow. The kid is nose deep into a DS and isn't really paying attention, but she looks me up and down with what appeared to be disgust before demanding that I get her luggage to wherever it has to go. I had no idea where that is and was honestly super exhausted. So I start to say, I'm sorry, but I don't work. Before I can finish, she butts in with, don't you frack with me. This place is going crazy and every other employee is busy. So even an office guy or supervisor, whatever you are, should be out here working with customers. I saw you help that other lady. So you can damn well help me with my bags. I raised my hands and started to explain again that I didn't know anything and didn't work there but she was not having it and started to raise her voice a bit. At this point, her child notices her volume, looks up at me with what seemed like a mixture of confusion and embarrassment, then tugs on her shirt and says, Mom, I don't think he... She turns quick and gives him a snit, not even a shh. Just like that loud click hiss noise that dog whisperer guy uses on TV. Then she started in on me being a lazy, unprofessional snowflake or whatever. Just then, the elderly lady comes up from the side of us, shaking her cane at the large woman and shouts in the best English she could muster, You'll leave my nephew alone. He's a good boy. Big woman turned to see this old lady with straight up lightning in her eyes and the big bit of mahogany inches from her face, then just turns around and leaves with her kid. No apology, nothing. Once her and her kid are a fair distance away, I thank the older woman, and she just motions for me to follow her. We go outside to a bench by the entrance, and she offers me a cigarette as she lights one up. I say, no thank you. She then pulls a thermos out of her purse and offers me some coffee. I once again say, no thank you. But she pours it anyway, and comments how the coffee here is so terrible. Turns out, she was visiting from Guatemala to see her son who works with a company that imports, blends, and roasts Guatemalan coffee. We're both coffee snobs. So we just sit and chat about coffee, our families, and why on earth I'm dressed like I am until her bus is called to board. I, of course, offered to help her with her luggage. But she says she only has the one small bag and is fine with carrying it. Definitely an interesting capstone to a very interesting weekend. This place sounds amazing. A chaotic bus station with all sorts of people at 3 a.m.? Perfect for people watching. I love that this older lady came to Opie's rescue, cane and all. And the fact that they were able to bond over coffee is super sweet. I'm no coffee connoisseur, but I do love a good cup of joe. And there was a super interesting coffee thread that popped up in the comments. Let's check it out. Someone said, wonderful. And Guatemalan coffee? Drooling. All I drink if my taste buds made money. OP replied, don't know if they still do it, but when I worked at Starbucks, they used to have a coffee tasting certification program. People could come in and get one of two different licenses to professionally taste coffee over the course of nine months. After an aptitude test, first round is two months of only drinking Pike's Place blend, followed by two months of drinking only French roast. If you don't hate those like I do, it might be worth a try seeing if they still offer it to non-employees. The person replied, Thank you, but pass. Starbucks somehow managed to convince all of America that we should pay exorbitant amounts for over-roasted, burned coffee. The only way I can drink it is to fill it with so much cream and sugar that it becomes dangerous for my health. Plus, my stepbrother told me their overpriced Guatemalan Antigua isn't. It's a friggin' blend price like the real thing, so appreciate the tip. OP replied, pro tip, Green Mountain Coffee is Starbucks coffee that the roasters or blenders mess up. They pull it out of the line, ship it to Vermont, mix it with messed up Dunkin' coffee, throw in some flavoring, and put it in K-cups. Our last story is something I call the reverse I don't work here lady. It's called New Uniform Day. Now, before anyone complains, yes, this story came from another website, customerssuck.com, but as I'm the person it happened to, and the same Scrudgemeyer who posted it there, onto the story. 
Well, the place I work at just bought these rather spiffy red polo shirts with our logo on them. Mostly for when we have an event at the center. I'm getting off of work and I'm heading into town to pick up my wife from where she works so we can head home. I'm hungry as all heck, so I pop into the convenience store nearby and stop and order a sandwich. I'm kneeling down so I can look at the chips they have to offer and I hear from behind me, What the Hades are you doing here? This raises an eyebrow, but since I have no enemies in the area, or anyone who would talk to me like that for that matter, I chalk it up to someone talking to someone else and get back to my chip selection. Don't you ignore me, you little punk. Who gave you permission to come here? Okay, since no one else answered him, I'm guessing he's referring to me. No idea as to whom this butt cap is, so I reply, I didn't think I needed your permission to go anywhere, and I go back to selecting chips for a snack. The dill pickle chips are intriguing me. Listen to me, you little toad, as your shift manager. I got tired of it at this point. I drew myself to my full six foot two inches height, turned so he could see me clearly and said, as my shift manager, you'll do what? Imagine the scene in the 2009 Star Trek movie where the Enterprise rises out of the atmosphere of Titan. That's the sort of music I imagine is playing when I do my slow rise and turn. What I saw when I turned around was the top of a head. A slight correction, and I see someone wearing a maroon McDonald's shirt and a nameplate declaring that he is the shift manager. As the rather short fellow realized that I wasn't who he thought I was, all the color ran out of his face and his ability to speak was really diminished. I, um, I'm, um, um, er, I'm awfully s s sorry. The next thing I saw was his little behind blue shifting as he runs out of there like he wants to break the light speed barrier. Turns out, Thanks to clarification by the store clerk, there is a person at the McDonald's who looks a little bit like me. But he doesn't have that whole, I'm about to rip out your soul and use it to wipe myself look on his face when he's annoyed. He's also about as short as the manager. I just scared the crap out of. Odds are, he asked to make a run for something and was told no by the manager who later decided to step out. Likely, he assumed, incorrectly, that I was that guy and he tried to intimidate me. Ah, nothing like the smell of stupid in the morning. This is a prime example of when a little power goes to someone's head. This shift manager needs to be knocked down a peg or two. Even if OP's assumption is accurate, it doesn't give this supervisor the right to talk to his team this way. Jeez. Let's check out the top comments before we wrap up. Artsy Koopa said, That says a lot about that shift manager, though. I mean, even if that was his employee, not at all the proper way to handle that. Techie Guy James replied, exactly, time to visit McDonald's to speak with a higher up. Someone else added, you mean like someone taller? Amphithusiast replied, the tallest. Pancake Dan said, who talks to people like that? OP replied, petty-minded people who shouldn't be trusted with even a modicum of power. The Tin Man's daughter added, people who think it's powerful to be able to hold a minimum wage worker's job over their head and use their position to make their employees fear them rather than respect them. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.